Hello, my fellow movie fans, and welcome to another episode of A Feast of Films Theater with your hosts, Matthew Alu and Ethan R. Hill. How was that? That was good? Oh, uh, yeah. Classic. Classic. <laughs> Hello, my fellow movie fans, and welcome to another episode of A Feast of Films. I am Ethan R. Hill, and with me, as always, is... Peace and love, man. Ringo Starr, are you here to replace Matthew Alu? No, man, but sometimes he just comes into my house and I'm like, get the hell out of here. But Matt, I want to be on the podcast. You promised <laughs> no, me a spot. No, you get the hell out of here, man. Get, 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 and take, take it. Damn record! He keeps coming in here trying to sell me records. Don't I'm taking like, these Cheetos man, too. Man, I love the Beatles, but come on, you gotta get out of my house, Ringo. Ah, then he always eats all my star. chicken, and it's just this. It's like, come on, man, come on, why, 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 why? Leave I the mean, chicken. He's, he's got nothing else to do. Ah, oh, man. Could you imagine he if could that's at least, what killed the he podcast? He could at least pay some rent every once in a while. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Can you imagine if making fun of Ringo Starr got us a cease and desist and that's what killed this show? <laughs> well, guys, I, mean, I guess uh, we're being any... sued by Ringo Starr. I mean... <laughs> by any decent measurement, this show is already dead. But yet, you and I live on, brother. You and I live on. What's that's up? a very pessimistic way to look at it, Matt. Yeah, well, you know, it's fun. Well, stop being so sad, Matt. Stop being so sad. How are you doing, my friend? How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Oh, you could have fooled me. <laughs> I'm feeling great. I'm feeling feel... great. Hey, no, no, what I'm saying, I wasn't being pessimistic. I was just saying by any standard, people might say like, oh, the show's dead. But it's like, hey, me and you are still having fun. It's always alive as long as the heart and the love and the soul is behind it, baby. That's what I was saying. I probably did not communicate that very clearly. And that is my bad. But I'm doing great. Um, It's been a good week. Got some really solid writing in there. Really loved it. Um, making some good progress and uh yeah man it's been pretty slick awesome hung out with the family bunch it was good my kid makes me laugh he's hilarious he always attacks me and he thinks it's like i gotta teach him how to wrestle properly or like get into like proper fights because he like jumps on my belly and then he just rolls over my head like sideways like a log and he thinks it's like an attack or something. It's kind of strange. Like, what the hell are you doing? Well, it's I mean, pretty think funny. It, he enjoys it. Think about it in the perspective of a full-grown adult doing to you, that to you. I think that would work. <laughs> it might, yeah. Just just roll over, man. Just do the roll over. It's well, especially the log like, roll. What's up? Well, and, like, if he gets, like, to be a tall, strong man, like, I mean, like, yeah, like, that's gonna be a... That, that could be lethal. That could be a, a whole new fighting strategy. Sign up for USC, <laughs> UFC like, oh, right uh, now, man. We call it the Maximus Roll. What's up? Um. Yes. No. Uh. But other than that, yeah, it's been it's been going pretty great. Enjoying the fam. Enjoying the writing. Enjoying uh reading scripts and other things that I've been doing this week, and it's been a fun time. How's your week been? Uh, it's been pretty good. Uh, I finished a couple scripts, which was good. Yeah. Like not I not start to finish, but like I had a couple scripts that were. Like, I had 20 pages left. I had, like, the third act to write. Right. And so I fired that off for both of them, which was a great feeling. Um, And now I'm just in the process of doing some more editing. I'm p- prepping a writing board, which is basically just all my ideas, like the titles and then, like, the log lines, so I can start figuring out what exactly it is that I want to write right what my next project because like ideally i want to write them all but the problem is i've noticed when i try and write more than one idea i just get confused i don't get confused i, I get distracted so easy because it's just bouncing between like from idea to idea to idea sure yeah and it's just I, that, yeah, yeah. I just need to pick one and stick with it it's like you almost and... gotta like pick one stick with it write it and like play with other stories in the back of your head every once in a while you know what i mean like toss them around mm-hmm but, like, yeah, have that one you're really dedicated and focused on, for sure. Well, like, in theory, if I keep the steam that I'm going and I actually remind myself that, hey, writing a bad first draft is not the end of the world, I can probably fire out at least a draft of most of these. It's yeah. just a matter of actually doing it. And it's just, it's, it's just something I need to do. 
it's kind of my plan and i feel like having the board dedicated to just having the ideas up there so i'm like oh which one am i working on okay that one yeah and like there's a couple of them too that are already like two-thirds done that i either need to finish off or expand or figure out but yeah no overall it's been pretty good and pretty chill nothing super crazy or anything like that it's just been living the best life trying to be creative and fulfill my dreams my destinies yeah man while we're still trying to experiment and come up with new ways to present the show uh today we're going to do something a little different and simplify kind of our question of the day and just have me and matt kind of bring up a topic each that'll be an episode each and we're just gonna see what that's like see if we can shorten and tighten our episode a bit more yeah because we tried last week and it did get away from us a bit obviously each one but uh we're gonna try again we'll see how it works so uh i guess i guess i i'll go first and i'll i i I think i unless you're ready and you want to go oh you go ahead man sounds good all right matt this is probably a little more deep than you'd like to get oh damn it (laughs) i hate when you start out like this all right um what do you find speaking of writing and talking about the scripts that we and scripts and the stories we've been working on telling like your book and all that stuff what do you find is the biggest cause of writer's block and how do you get past it hmm what's the biggest cause of writer's block like what do you find distracts you the most or like causes you the most like like the most headaches when it comes to that's that's two different things like what so because what distracts me is damn near everything sometimes <laughs> sometimes like i go sit down to write and then i just become like a dog chasing a squirrel you know what i mean like anything is like oh shiny object and that's like that resistance right like you're just your mind almost like there's a resistance to actually sitting down and doing your work so your mind's like ah let's just find everything to distract you so that's one thing um but yeah, like writer's block when it's like, where's this story going or what's happening next? Do you um, ever find there's a specific thing that derails you, though, that kind of starts that? When I get to a place where I have no idea what the F is going on, like that is the thing, because because really, like when I'm when I'm creating my stories, right, like or at least and this is how like I um, tackle it um, right now, I'm working on an outline um, and I've been finding I'm sure once like this outline, I've been able to tackle a lot of the things where I'd normally have some sort of writer's block. Yeah. Um, so once I actually go to sit down and write, I don't think I'm going to have to deal with that as much because I've already thought a lot of these things out. Um, but generally when I come up and it's usually somewhere in the middle of the story, cause you always get like a really solid ending, a really solid beginning, like in my head, an idea in the middle of how it like all connects but sometimes i get i hit those roadblocks when it's like gets down to the details of how these things actually go down um so my mind i got the broad strokes but i always seem to somewhat hit a wall sometimes when it's like coming down and writing the specifics to how these things and events all kind of connect together um It's pretty much just when I get to a point where I just have no idea what the hell is going on. It's like, I know where I need to go, but I just don't know how to get there. (laughs) You know what you need to do, but you don't know if you have the strength to do it. Yeah, pretty much. Like, I I know where this needs to end and where these characters need to be. But it's like, um, I did not think about how to get there. Um, And that's kind of the nice part when I'm working on this novel right now is the outline process. Like, right now I did a general sketch of my narrative, which is like... um, the significant kind of like scenes and like events that take place throughout. It's kind of like writing the narrative without actually writing, obviously the story. Um, Like, you know, getting a feel more for the characters, where are they at for every scene and what events need to take place and, you know, getting just this general sketch in. Um, And that really helped. That's really helped because like, again, I come to the middle and it's like, okay, I know what I need to do here. Um, for an example, like example, um, <clears throat> let's see, without like giving away too much information to my own story. Um, so like the main character needs to earn the trust of this other character who kind of like, we'll call him is like a master over him kind of thing. Right. And it's like, so, you know, you need to do this kind of step, but it was like, how the hell do I do it? Um, and when I was doing this outline, 
a lot of the things I'll do now is just kind of try and get into a flow state where I'm just writing down my ideas and thoughts. Like as I'm working it on my head, I'm writing down those words. Like I'm writing down as I'm working it out in my head, if that makes sense. I'm almost talking to myself on paper. Like if you look at paper, my, my, writing, my like scribbles, you'll see like, you're like, this guy got like separate personality disorder or something because like he is having a conversation with himself because that's kind of what it comes down to. And then through that, I kind of, I found the link and was like, oh, there's the idea, boom, and then kind of just found it that way. So, um, outlining really, really helps me when it comes to writer's block and just writing down as I'm working it out as well, like getting those thoughts on paper as I'm writing, having those conversations with myself. And then eventually you just, you just, uh, that, that kind of thing, asking those questions really opens up your mind to the different possibilities that are out there, right? Because, yeah, sometimes we go in our story thinking, I need this to happen, this to happen, this to happen. Um, when we ask questions, when we don't really know where we need to go or what we need to do, it opens our mind to the possibilities that are out there, which are usually something we didn't come into it thinking of before. If that makes sense. I know it was really, like, kind of rambly, but it's a... Uh... It's like, yeah, it's, it's, a, different, it's a process. Because, yeah, like, it for me writer's block and like trying to figure out where to go next yeah it's um it was definitely a challenge before whether it was scripts all the way back to high school with like bond or whatever or all the other random scripts that i've done between then and now that like most of them are unfinished slang like i probably got like dozens of unfinished dead scripts on my computer like or on some kind of flash drives <laughs> flash sticks somewhere like you know just billions of my m brain children um, but yeah, those were always parts where you stumbled on. It's like, once you get past like the interesting opening or whatever, or like, you know, and get into that middle of the story, it's like how, keeping that momentum going, keeping the pieces together while you kind of put that bridge going across to again, getting to that third act and stuff. So, um, yeah, outlining, that's what I would suggest if anyone's doing writing or working on stories, like get a brief uh, outline of your story and try and work out some of those problems and find them before you get into there uh, while you're writing. Build a blueprint. That's exactly it, yeah. What about you, bud? <laughs> yeah, awesome. For me, it's weird. It's really, really weird because the outline process, I don't usually have too much of an issue with. And I do like to outline most of my stuff and I kind of have a few techniques for that. But for me, character names... Or, like, names of places. Like, just names in general, I'm terrible with. I don't know why. I have Fair enough. Hard, yeah. such a hard time generating That sounds like that fit the names. character. Yeah. And then the... And then the other one is dialogue. Because for me... And this is the thing I need to get over. I need to get past this. I write my scripts like I'm writing mm -hmm. my third draft. As yeah. opposed to just writing the first draft. So what I'll do a lot of the times is I'll sit there and be like... What's the perfect response that this character yeah. needs to say for this thing? What's the perfect response for this? And like I in the meantime I'm also second guessing all the names that I've picked or like to get past the name when I look at Proster and go like give me a name and he's like this one I'm like no. This one. No. This one. No. And then eventually he'll say enough names that I'll finally have one come to my head and be you like oh You sound like my wife asking name. me for an opinion. <laughs> How does it, which, That's like which dress all his answers are wrong. No. Okay. <laughs> why, why am I here? <laughs> it's to help the thought process. That's all it is. Oh, no. And, um, yeah, it's the dialogue one. I haven't figured out how to get past aside from like just doing it, just saying, screw yeah. it. I'll come back and fix it. But it's so to me, the character's talking and because it's, again, it's more so for scripts because it's literally, the thing that drives the movie is these characters interactions. It's really hard to just say, ah, I'll come back and fix it because well, no, I want to do a read through with this. I want to, I don't want to have to go back and read mm -hmm. this dialogue every single time, but that's part of the process. It is. Yeah. And I'll, I'll admit it's a bit of an ego thing that you don't want to go back and have to re yeah. redo what you already did because you want it to be perfect the first time. But it's the idea of like, but like I, I think 
Like we take pride, we take pride in our work, but I think sometimes that pride overshadows, well, it overshadows the possibilities. And that's the... kind of why I was talking about like asking ourselves questions instead. Like when we come in with that prior thinking, like we know the answer, like, yes, this is the perfect thing. Instead of asking like, what is the perfect thing? You know what I mean? Like instead of being open, cause that's, I think when we like open our minds and stuff like that, it just gives us the opportunity to continue to learn and grow and to reach a level more and to find answers that we didn't think were there before. Um, that could even open up different avenues into our narrative or into our characters that we didn't even recognize were there before. Um, so yeah, like I just, yeah, finding the perfect in one, that's always tough, man. Cause dialogue is such a, and sometimes you don't, sometimes even tweak it. I think I'm sure in films, they always tweak dialogue while they're doing it anyway. Right. Because some things like sometimes yep. you just can't quite tell till you're in the moment saying it. Well, it's actually, there's a job and I've had to do this for our stuff. There, there's a job where actually someone has to go in after the movie's done being edited and they have to type up right. a new draft of the script after it's been shot and edited and then that's the script right. they use for dubbing in adr so when you have to re-record all the dialogue and stuff like that or the certain lines you have the exact lines that were said by the actors on the day <laughs> and that's it's interesting again it, it goes back i've mentioned it a few times on this on the podcast oh, before but <clears throat> you you write a movie three yeah. times right you you have the writing phase you have the shooting phase then you have the editing phase and like i don't know it's i like to get it right the first time but it never happens like it, it very rarely makes it from page to big yeah screen. that's a tough bar to hit um character names i'm also like terrible at um in my outline like right? again again this is like the beauty of like doing this outline and i'm loving it um, like I kind of have my main character's name picked, but literally nobody else. Like I literally have like a character who's like his brother-in-law. I'm like, this guy's Mr. Brother, Mr. Bad Guy, Mr. Mentor, Mr. Whatever, like Miss This, Miss, like I See, just put like these little filler names. Like one dude, I'm like, you're Freddy today. <laughs> like I'll change your name later. Like when I actually like, get into it and start breaking into these characters, but I just feel like the one part, like, and this is kind of like, I don't know, this is like a strange little thing for me. Um, but sometimes I don't feel like I know the characters well enough to, like, know, know, n name them, but, name like, them. know their name. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't know you well now. Yeah. And as in, like, my next stage, now that I got, like, my narrative all figured out and, like, the main beats and, like, um, uh, where you know, what all things need to happen and how they need to happen... Um, and which will still change and evolve as I write too. Like it's all about like creating a blueprint, but then also being free with it as well to a certain degree to create what you need to create. Um, but uh, yeah, I just figured I would. Uh, oh yeah, the next step I was talking about is like actually character outlines now, like figuring out who these characters specifically are, and that's kind of when I feel like I'll name them. Um, Cause yeah, like all like if you read my thing, it's just like Mister Brother. Where did this guy go? <laughs> like, where, where's Slave Bro, man? Where's Slave Bro? <laughs> like, it's just funny little names. See, and I always have... I have problems the opposite way, where I can name char side oh, characters, yeah. no problem. It's the main character I always have a problem naming, because it's like, okay, but who are we yeah. following? Who is this guy? And, like, uh, unfortunately a lot of our scripts we're that surrogate character right so it's like but you can't call every single character matt in your scripts and you can't call every i can't call every character ethan right like it's yeah is, is no it's not named matt? Is no, that what it is? not even close no no not <laughs> even close at all but it, it's just one of those things it's very it's interesting and it's i there are a lot of filmmakers i know who like they pulled the names from their friends but all my friends have super distinct names that everyone that I'd put into a movie, they'd know. They'd be like, oh, that's me. Cool. Yeah, 100 percent. And it's like, like, if I name a character Ben, Ben's not going to be like, oh, that's just a random name you pick. Ben's going to be like, oh, yes, that's because of me. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, I actually kind of is because it's again, it's when you yeah. think about it, it's people, you know, right? Like, it's like it, it's very it's very tricky to find names like again names of people i don't know because i i try to associate these new characters with as new people 
and a lot of times, like I know I've met several. Dude, mats yeah, mats are a dime a dozen. But... It's like, bro, everywhere I've worked, there's at least one other mat. Everywhere I've worked, there's at least one. You are the. You are the only mat that I'm currently speaking to. <laughs> not by choice, like not like I'm mad, I'm mad at the other mats, the mats, but like that I currently have regular conversations with. Um, but like, yeah, no, it's 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 interesting, and like I think it's kind of interesting too because like characters can 100 percent inform their name as well as their decisions. As you get to know these characters, it's yeah. kind of it's interesting that way, right? And yeah, and that's and I think that's the joy of like writing, and that's the joy of creating, like. Even talk like even just our conversation here, like what things block us, what what of our what are solutions. Even though like you're working on scripts mainly, and like I'm working on a novel right now, it's like we just still have very different ways of going about how we tackle things, and and that's like the joy of writing. There's no one hundred like there's no like there's guidelines to writing, and like things like oh maybe follow this, follow that. But you can break any of those like guidelines if you want to. You can you can tackle writing from oh, any yeah. direction you would like to tackle it. Uh, it's good to know the guidelines and know what you're breaking so that you're breaking them on purpose. You're not just doing it out of like ignorance, but like it's just yeah, I'm like and just like the way everyone kind of like comes at writing and comes at art. Like some people take a more spiritual approach. Some people are very like direct some people are very you know maybe somewhere in between it's just interesting even like our ideas and stuff that like you and i come up with like we're just yeah. so different that's why it's fun doing a podcast i think too because we definitely have different views on things for sure and like we do look at things from two different angles see the same thing slightly different angles so like, almost well, like we're yeah, two different okay. people okay sm- okay what <laughs> all right all right, all right. But no, I think I think that's that's the cool thing about it, and that's why well, I wanted to ask this question. It's something we haven't really talked about before, and I'm kind of curious. I was curious to see kind of what blocked you and stuff, but honestly, yeah, outlines are a phenomenal way to go about plotting yeah, out your abso- story absolutely. beforehand. And like character names, I sorry, I have no solutions. Maybe baby generators, but even then, like I'll go and I'll get to the A's, and it's like oh. I found like six names, but all my characters. <laughs> yeah, and that's start another problem A's. too, because you want to like make them different enough so they're like memorable, right? Distinguishable names. Um, yeah, exactly. No, it's just, uh, yeah, crazy. Like especially working on a novel for sure. Like, cause it's just like I've done scripts and stuff, but it's like, yeah, novel is a lot. There's more meat to it, so having it's that bigger. outline is really, I think, gonna help me out for sure. Do you ever, do you ever find like? either pieces of media or music or anything like that it helps with the writer's block or is it just kind of distracting? Oh, hundred percent. hundred music, man. hundred percent. Anytime, like anytime I don't know what's happening, what's going on. Sometimes I can just listen to music as well. Like other than like having this conversation with myself, which is a fairly new thing that I've started. Um, these kind of like self conversations to like bring out what is actually there and like dig and find it, find the answer. Um, what I used yeah. to do and what I still do from time to time as well is it's like you find a piece of music for like the tone that's in that situation or what you're trying to like convey. And sometimes as I'm listening to the music, I can see, I can see what I it need just, to write. Like I can see yeah. what happens or I can see what happens next as it goes along. Like very often, like, especially when it comes to like stories or screenplays or novel, I can very much see, I'm already watching the movie and the story in my head. I'm already seeing it, right? So, like, when no, I have exactly, that music right? sometimes, it's like, it just makes certain things that are foggy, like, clear. Yeah, it clears it right up. And it just like, clears it up, yeah. No, this is where it needs to go. So, yeah, no, music for sure. Music no, for sure. I dig sure, that, man. man. I'm the same way. Yeah, interesting, interesting topic, man. I didn't think I was going to get to talk a little bit about writing today. It was cool. It was fun. It's a nice way to, it's a nice, nice... Nice break from just rating our top films. Films all start with writers. It always has to start with someone writing something. Like unless no one buys. Unless you're <laughs> Mad Max Fury Road, then for some reason it starts with a storyboard. But well, yeah, you know, but it's you know, it generally starts with some sort of idea. 
Well, exactly. You usually don't get approved to grab cameras and money and then be like, what's, your, what, Without a what's story. the story? I don't, I don't know. We're making it up as we go. <laughs> You'll find out when we're done shooting <laughs> it with your millions of dollars. <laughs> exactly. Uh, anyway. Well, yeah, no. That said, let us know down below if you guys are writers or, you know what, what, what is your writer's block of life? If there are things in your life that you find that you just get blocked on, what is that? And how do you get past it? Let us know down below. We'd be looking forward to hearing from you guys. I think, is that it for this episode, Matt? Ah, uh, yeah. 27 part one? 27 part one, yeah. So this has been another episode of Feast of Film. Hopefully a smaller He's episode we'll find to, out yeah. after Prosser. Oh my God, I'm so sorry, all. Prosser. I'm s- it's gonna, I'm we've so had fun. Sorry. We've Me and Matt just, the problem was me and Matt enjoy goofing off too much with each other. But at the same time, it entertains us. Hopefully this entertained you. We'll see you all next week. My name is Ethan R. Hill, and with me as always is... Oh, you son of a love, man. God damn it, Ringo. Get the hell out of here. Matt Alu. We'll see you all next week. Have a great week, everybody. Bye-bye. So long. <laughs> Toodaloo. <laughs> and may Ringo be with you. Toodaloo. <laughs> I think anyone's going to know what anything we're talking about with Ringo stuff. <laughs> Man, we're having fun. That's the main point. Yeah, sure. They're just going to be like, why the fuck is Ringo here? I don't know. Why any of us here? <laughs> it's Ringo.